Hey there, today we're gonna to use Photopea to make this. So let's get started. First of all, we're gonna need a picture and uh, we're gonna actually use Photopea's built-in camera to do that. So uh, you can see we're already at photopea.com. I'm just gonna go up to File and I'm gonna pick Take a Picture. Now, if you haven't used Photopea to take a picture before, uh, or even if you set your permissions, uh, so it's a little more strict, it may ask you this question and say, Photopea wants to use your camera, just allow it. And then you can see it gave me an error, but it's because it hasn't figured out that it's been allowed. So we're just gonna close it. We're gonna open it back up, take a picture. And there it is. I know, what a handsome young man. Well, I'm handsome, well, a man. So I'm gonna adjust this so that my head is in there pretty well. And um, remember when you're taking your picture, there's a camera, my camera's there, and then there's your screen, my screen is over there. Don't look at the screen when you take your picture, look at the camera. Your camera is probably just above your screen. So for you, you might be wanting to look like this, but look up at the camera. So position yourself, I'm looking at the screen so I can figure out if I'm right. It's pretty good. Now I'm looking at the camera and I'm gonna press take a picture. And you see it says a new project was created really quickly. So we're gonna close this and there it is, a lovely picture of me. So to do this, we're gonna first have to make this into a square and not just any square, it has to be the right size square has to be 600 pixels by 600 pixels. So we're gonna go over here to the crop tool and we are going to set this to a fixed size. And we're going to say 600 by 600. Now you'll see this box changes to that shape. Stretch it around your picture to make it fit just the part you want. We really just want your head. Don't worry about what's behind you. If you have other things, it's fine. And then uh, just either double click or press enter and it'll make this the right size. Now I'm looking at this picture. I'm noticing it's kind of flat and dull looking. It's not very sharp or bright or anything like that. So the first thing we're gonna actually do is adjust it a little bit. So we're gonna go to image adjustments and levels levels that you set where the lightest spot and the darkest spot are in your image. And you can see right now, uh, there's this curve. Well, it's not a curve. There's a channel. It's showing you all the highlights and lights and how much there is of each color. This is how much black there is. You'll see there's pretty much none. And then it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Here's the midpoint where it's right between black and white. I call that gray. And then over here is white. So the first thing we'll do is just move these sliders in a little bit. And you can see when I move this one in, it makes everything brighter. And when I move this one in, it's making just the dark parts darker. Now we can go all the way in. That's pretty hideous. So we're just gonna go just to the start. And then we're gonna take this gray and see if we can move it to where it's better. Not perfect, but for what we're doing, it's gonna work. Uh, we could even go up and try adjusting the hue and saturation. So image adjustments, hue and saturation, maybe throw a little more saturation on it. Something a little more colorful. And there I am. So there's my first picture. I'm gonna change the name of it. I'm gonna go up here where it says camera, because that's what it calls all the pictures. If you take a thousand, they'll all say camera, 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 camera. So we don't wanna save them like that. So I'm gonna double click this and I'm gonna rename it. I'm gonna call it big head. And say okay, and then we'll save it. And now I have it saved. You can see down here, I've got it saved. And um, that big head is there. So if I ever need it again, I have it, but we probably won't ever have to open that. We just saved it to be safe. So now we're gonna make our main document. And our main document has to be bigger than this because this just sits in the center of it. This is 600 by 600 pixels. So it's 600 dots wide, 600 dots tall. So we're gonna make a new thing that's bigger to put it in. So I'm gonna go file and new, and I'm going to make it 1000 
by 1,000. And this other stuff you can leave for what we're doing right now, it's fine. Just hit create and you can see there it is. And I'm gonna call this multiple me. Try and spell things correctly. Okay, and I'm gonna save it really quick. I'm just gonna press control S to save it really quick. And you'll see down there, it saved my multiple me. Now we're gonna drag that first picture onto this and we want it in the center. So I'm gonna go back to the big head. I'm gonna to switch to the move tool. I'm gonna to click here on the name of the background layer and drag up here onto where it says multiple me. And when I let go, you'll see it's there, but it's up in the corner. And we don't want it in the corner, we want it in the middle. So I'm gonna click on it and drag, but how will I know when it's exactly in the middle? It's gonna tell you, watch. See that line that popped up? And that line, when you get both of them, then you're in the exact center. Now, if you go to move and you don't see those lines, go up here to view and make sure snap is on and make sure in snap too that all of these things are on, especially layers. You're gonna need that one in a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to that big head. We're gonna make it smaller. So we're gonna just resize it. So I'm gonna go image, image size. And instead of being 600 pixels, it's gonna be 200. And because it has this little lock icon on, when I change this one, I click down here, it automatically changes. This means it's keeping the ratios the same. So as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. As it gets taller, it gets wider. Okay, so, and we don't have to worry about this other stuff for now, we're just gonna click okay. We have a much smaller picture. Now, just to be safe, I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna call it Little Head. And save that as well. You'll see I have a little head and a big head, and these have ones after them. That's because I already did this once to make sure it works, because I don't want to tease you. I have something that doesn't work. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so we can see this better. It's kind of small in here, but we're going to just look at it closer. So control and plus lets us look at it bigger. You can see it's pretty low resolution, but that's okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put some filters on this. A filter, you guys know it from Instagram or anything like that, is just something that changes the way an image looks. There aren't a lot of filters in PhotoP, but there's some, and we're going to experiment with them. So I'm going to go to filter, and I'm going to pick the first thing, 3D. This is normal map. Let's see what it does. Ooh, it makes me turn kind of purplish and bluish. And let's see if these do anything. Okay, yep, those change how much it's popping. That's how fuzzy it is. So we could go from very sharp all the way down to a blur. We could move these sliders and you can see each one is changing a different aspect of the image. We could invert it, it changes the thing. So I like it like that, that's fine. I'm gonna click okay. And I'm on the move to tool still. So I'm just gonna grab that background and I'm gonna pop it back up on a multiple me. And it popped up, it actually went right where I want it because it always sticks them right up in the corner. So the first one, we don't have to worry about. Now I wanna do my next effect, but I don't wanna do it on something that's already got an effect on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to edit and undo and go step backward. And you can see that uh, it's back where it was. So let's do another filter. Filter, let's blur it this time. How about a radial blur? And did you see what that did? It looks like it's spinning. We could try a zoom too. Ooh, look at that, ooh, what? What's going on? So let's do it, ah, that's, that's good. I will say okay, and then we'll move it up here and do the same thing. Now watch, when I put this on here, you don't see the other picture anymore, you see this one. But if you look over here, you can see both layers are there, just one's on top of the other. So I'll just grab this one. And because I turned on that layer snap, it'll snap right in. And then you just do the same thing. Go edit, step backward, filter, 
pick a different filter, change it how you want. Uh, look at that, a beautiful angel face. And then put it on and then just keep doing that. So I'm gonna do that really quickly right now. You're gonna get to watch. Now I'm going to do a little different thing here. Instead of using the filters, I'm going to go into hue and saturation and change it that way first. And there you go. And if you look at this, you'll notice that in most of them, not every single one, but most of them, you can still tell what the face was in the original picture. So that's your goal uh, to make it so, and most of them, we can see the connection between all of them. Even this one, that's big blocky chunks. If you look, you can see this is my shirt and there's my head and this is the background. It's not detailed enough to actually be able to recognize it on its own but you can totally tell what it is when you see it with the other things. This one too, you can totally connect them. All right, and th then just save it. Uh, so file and save as PSD, and there it is, multiple me. All right, that's it, enjoy. <laughs>